After an extended hiatus, my guest is making a return to the entertainment industry. My friend, actor, and recording artist Matthew Borish joins me next on an all-new RxG Exclusives. We must open up our minds and take a look inside. Not that we find we hold all the answers tonight. You're watching the award-winning. RxG Exclusive, hosted by award-winning actor and award-winning filmmaker Robert X. Golfin. You've likely seen Matthew Boris on the silver screen, tube, and stage. He began his career at the age of 10 as Chip in the national tour of Disney's Beauty and the Beast. He later starred in the off-Broadway production of Beast on the Moon, and he was a series regular on the early 2000s CBS crime drama, Hack. Hack, CBS Friday this fall. Portraying the role of Mikey Oshansky Jr., the son of David Morris and Donna Murphy's characters. My name is David. Your middle name is David. You hate it. I like it now. The show ran for two seasons, and that's where our friendship began. I was a production assistant on that program. And Matt, I became very close to you and your family, even invading your homes to shoot my award-winning film, Punch Me, starring Brian Anthony Wilson of HBO's The Wire, ah! and the experimental digital series, Julie McKnight's The Counterparts, starring Kristen Gabrielle, daughter of Grammy-nominated Kathy Sledge. Matt and I shared the screen in the feature film comedy Rounding First. I'm gonna kill him! You boys get what you need? What'd they take? Candy, and a six-pack of beer. And it was a blast getting to act with you all those years ago. And we both share some hometown history. I was the first high school intern at the Greater Philadelphia Film Office. I just have to jump in for a second and say that we met Robert when he was still in high school. He was a film office intern. Matt followed that up with a short-lived stint as the youngest intern ever. Matt's also a recording artist. <laughs> Hold on to whatever will get you through. Hold on to whatever you find and I've got to say, Matt, I remember being at the season one rap party of Hack, and there you were, the youngest person in the room, commanding all ears, with a rendition of Pat Benatar's Heartbreaker of Memory Serves. Several years ago, you released an EP under the name Matt Carey. Your music has been featured on networks like A&E and MTV. And you've been away from music and acting for a while, but as of late, you've been back behind the mic and plotting a return. <laughs> to acting as well. So elated to see your face, man. It's It's been too long. Likewise. It's it a long way to reunion. Thanks for being here. Happy to be here. Thanks for having me. Well, listen, as a child, you had auditions, callbacks, performances. You traveled throughout the United States and Canada. Let's talk about your wonderful parents, Linda and Arnold Borish. Would you consider them to be show business parents? or quote-unquote regular parents. There's no doubt they supported your artistic plights from a very early age. Yeah, I would, uh, I would consider them to be the opposite of, of show business, business parents from what I saw mostly in the industry. I, I remember uh, going into, usually it was like the parents that push the kids into doing acting. And in this case, in my case, it was the opposite. My parents really did not want me to, to do acting. Um, oh. And eventually I, I went with them so much by asking to, to do it, they let me go to an audition and I ended up getting it. <laughs> Interesting. I didn't know that. So there was definitely a reluctance on their part for, for me going into it. But um, yeah, they, they saw how much I enjoyed it and, uh, and definitely got on board. How long would you say it took you to convince them that you were serious about this? A year or two. Wow. I want to thank my parents for never giving up on me. Mom, I thank you for the faith you had, even when things were at their worst. Dad, I thank you for your never-ending support through everything. We mentioned Hack, a drama series from CBS about a Philly police officer who leaves the force after being accused of corruption for a career as a cab driver turned vigilante. And of course, the industry just lost one of its brightest stars, your former co-star, Andre Brower. I remember Andre being on set okay. Uh, so humble, so kind, funny, but dedicated to his craft. Funny story, 
you probably remember this, he lived at the craft service table. <laughs> but he never um, played into yeah. that celebrity role. Anytime I tried to offer to grab something for him, he preferred to go by himself so that he could talk to the crew people and really made people feel special like family. I know you were very young and most of your scenes were with David and Donna, but what do you remember of your time with Andre and with the entire cast of Hack for that matter? Yeah, I just, I couldn't have lucked out more with the, uh, with the cast of Hack um, and definitely did a, did, did a few scenes with Andre and he was uh, just a consummate professional. He was down to earth, humble, uh, just one of the kindest guys you could meet. And for a, a young actor watching somebody that, dedicated to their craft and and that brilliant was uh was a pretty amazing experience and i would say the same about uh david and donna as well but yeah it was i, I really feel like i lucked out with that cast it was a fantastic a, a fantastic leading cast because they all were they all seemed very humble and you don't get that every day mm -hmm. in the industry, that's for sure no yeah well, Matt, when it comes to music, I suspect you've been inspired greatly by the places you've been. You've taken up residence in the likes of Pennsylvania, Maine, Virginia, Hollywood, and music capital Nashville, Tennessee over the years. What's the life yep. and music scene like in those respective places, and how have they influenced you as an artist? Yeah, so they're all, they they're all have their unique music scene. Um, you know, LA is a lot different than Nashville, and and uh, when you're playing uh, shows in those places, you really get a feel for the the scene. Um, I recently moved to New Hope, Pennsylvania, which also has its kind of its own little art and and music scene um, on a, on a much smaller scale than than LA and Nashville, but um, it has a similar vibe to it. So, I think. Um, being in those places and, and being around talented musicians, um, you know, LA and national in particular places that the musicians congregate, it was, uh, incredibly helpful to me, um, to, to watch, to watch those other talents work. And were the audiences and, and how they and, reacted to musicians different in those places? Yeah. LA is definitely, uh, judges, judges pretty quickly. And, uh, you know, if they like you or not pretty fast, um, Nashville, I think it's more everybody's there for the music, and um, yeah, so it's it's definitely different in every city. Since you're relatively well traveled, do you have a favorite city, and do you see yourself moving somewhere in particular in the future? Um, so I really like where I live now. Uh, I moved here last February, so I've been here almost a year, um, and uh, it's kind of right in the middle of New York and Philly right on the Delaware river. And, uh, I definitely plan on, on staying here for the foreseeable future, but, uh, also love LA, love New York and, uh, definitely want to get back to those places at some point. Well, you're not just a singer songwriter. You also have been playing the guitar. I could be your inspiration. How long have you been, strumming and do you play any other instruments yeah so i i started uh a little bit in in high school um I, I didn't have any formal training just taught myself from looking at like tabs online and and chord structures and things um and then kind of got back into it when i moved out to los angeles after college i also play the piano but i would say the main thing is the the, the main instrument is the voice that i use but uh the uh being able to, to write songs on piano and guitar has definitely been a, a big help. So you think it's important for singers, if they can, to learn how to play an instrument so that they are uh, multi-hyphenate, if you will? Yeah, I, th I think that's definitely an important important thing, and I think um, other musicians tend to respect that too more. If you can, if you you know, you can do different things, it shows a little bit of versatility. Well, folks in our line of work, the arts often live very unhealthy lives from lack of sleep to poor eating habits, from frequent travel and topsy-turvy schedules to mental and physical strain. How do creatives like ourselves stay focused and productive while also taking care of our bodies and minds? Yeah, it's, uh, it's definitely uh, the industry is, is definitely a grind and it can, it can definitely wear you down. Um, so I think it's, uh, it's important to have, uh, if you have a, a passion for it, that's kind of the, the fuel that, that keeps the fire burning.
is just that that passion for for what you're doing because it's not something you would do unless you you really really enjoyed it this is true this is true well aside from your artistry you also have a degree in finance from the university of richmond a background in the investment and finance field and in entrepreneurship having helped to open the third recreational cannabis dispensary in new jersey can you tell me about those ventures a little yeah, so I, I got into uh, to finance in college, and I, I really felt like I kind of got into it because that's what everybody else was doing. And I did it for a long time, about eight years, um, and it was really kind of wearing me down. Um, I also have uh, Crohn's disease. I was diagnosed with Crohn's disease um, after college, and uh, cannabis has been a, a, big, a big help to me um, dealing with the symptoms of that. And uh, as I've seen it, the industry expand, uh, I recently made the jump into into that side of things. And it's, uh, it's been going re really, really well. So I'm the vice president of marketing for Union Chill Cannabis Company in Lamberville, New Jersey. And we have uh, two more stores opening later this year. So very excited about that. But I definitely think it's a, a helpful thing for a lot of issues. And, and uh, I'm glad it's, it's being destigmatized, uh, seems like across the country. Well, and you mentioned your, your Crohn's disease and some number of years ago, it would have been almost impossible for artists in the industry to really be transparent about what they were going through due to insurance reasons, uh, actors thinking they would be released from right. productions. Do, do you think that, that the times have gotten better in terms of people being able to be open about what they're going through? I do, yeah. I, I remember even at, um, going into hack, like I had to have a physical before, and I, if I had Crohn's disease back then, I'm not sure they would have uh, accepted me for the part. But I think um, the laws have changed since then. Um, and there's definitely been some significant advancements made. So yeah, I'm happy to see where it's where it's headed and definitely still room to go. But I, I think we're, we're a lot farther along than we used to be. Well, Matt, with your foot in so many worlds, I imagine the pressure is always on. You recently married the love of your life. How does your wife influence your creativity and music she's a fellow artist too correct she is yeah she uh she's a writer um and she's definitely inspired me to to get back into to music and acting and get into the cannabis industry and um has really inspired me to to do what makes me happy um and to focus on things that are important so it's definitely been a, a life-changing thing for me and that's beautiful and as you continue to share pieces of you with the universe what at this point in your life do you aim to be your legacy or at least part of your legacy i would uh i'm hoping to make uh an impact in in the cannabis industry as well as uh acting in music um there's a, a local playhouse in town called the bucks county playhouse that's uh actually a pretty well renowned local theater so i'm hoping to get back into that uh next spring and um go from there. But I, I would really like to, I would like the world to be able to say I, I tried to help people. I think that's the, the most important thing is caring about people and helping people. And um, that's what I'm trying to do with, with cannabis. And uh, I also think it's, it's really important as entertainers to entertain people and take their minds off of their troubles and their worries. And uh, I think that's what any good entertainer does. And, and that's what uh, makes them feel good. So yeah like to have some kind of impact and as we both know to be an actor on the stage takes a certain amount of stamina the fact that you did the beauty and the beast tour as a child is so impressive to me um i i wonder what your preference is between screen and stage and do you think the discipline that you have to have as a performer is different yeah absolutely i i would say stage is infinitely harder than, than film. I mean, there are different challenges when it comes to both, but, uh, for me, filming was always, it was always something new, um, every day. So you're not, you're not doing the same thing over and over again. And not that it's the same thing in, in stage because every performance is different, but, uh, in terms of like the dialogue and everything, everything's new every day. You're also spending countless hours setting up for a scene, hundreds of different takes from different angles. Uh, and it's just a much more, choreographed thing than than stage which which is much more spontaneous and natural um and definitely harder to to stay on top of 
So for me, I, I would say that that film is is uh, a lot less challenging than than stage acting in a lot of ways. Do you have a dream role or a dream type of project that you would like to do at some point in your acting career? Um. Yeah, I, my, I would say my favorite performance of all time is possibly uh, Leonardo DiCaprio in The Departed. Um, getting to play, yeah, some kind of character like that would be would be pretty incredible. And tell folks about your musical career. What, where can they listen to some of your music, and, and what's your style of music? I mean, I've been listening to you for years, so I know, but tell the people. Yeah, I would say uh, I'm... Definitely heavily influenced by John Mayer. Gravity. Stay the hell away from me. Um, kind of acoustic guitar folk. Um, that's the that's the main thing, and and uh, they can find my music on Spotify, Apple Music, uh, anywhere songs are sold under Matt Carey. Well, I've got to ask about Special Agent Jack Bauer, and no, I'm not talking about Keithler, Twenty Four Sutherland. Tell me about your feline fur baby. So, Special Agent <laughs> Jack Bauer is uh, is my cat. Um, I'm not going to say I came up with the name. I got it from. In the in the series, it's always sunny in Philadelphia. They name a, a cat they have Special Agent Jack Bauer, and that was always really hilarious to me. So, I uh, I always said when I get a cat, I'm going to name him Special Agent Jack Bauer, and I did. Well, Matt, before we depart, I have to ask what your thoughts are about. I, I've been asking a lot of my guests this recently about AI, and of course the recent strike that we were on. What are your thoughts about? the direction that the industry is going in, in terms of artificial intelligence and just protecting performers. Yeah, I think it's, uh, it's, it's, it's definitely scary when you think about the, the possibilities of, of AI, um, and especially, you know, the threats to performers that it poses. Um, and I'm happy, uh, that my fellow actors made a, a stand against that. And it seemed like the, uh, the strike worked out a, a pretty good solution for the time being, but I think it's going to continue to be, an issue and something that we need to keep fighting for. Cause I, I think, you know, people seeing performers, natural performances uh, is really important, no matter what the, the capabilities of, of AI eventually entail. Um, I think and the still people are going to want to see that human. Yeah, absolutely. Yeah. So yeah, I think it's a, it's a very important issue and I hope that people continue to stand up uh, against it. And Matt, anything else you'd like to share with viewers about you and your artistry and your life? I would say, uh, yeah, if you want to come see me play, I play a lot around uh, New Hope and Lambertville um, in this area. So i um, usually doing shows every few weeks. Um, and yeah, anybody's welcome to come by. I'm definitely hoping to catch up with you soon. All right. Matt Borish, a talented performer with whom I hope to someday soon collaborate once again this has been a delight thanks for watching rxg exclusives i'm robert x goffin i'll see you next time Make sure to like, comment, and hit subscribe on our YouTube channel so you never miss out. RxG Exclusives, hosted by Robert X. Golfin, now playing.